British Prime Minister Boris Johnson will give his next update on lockdown measures throughout the country this Sunday. The Premier League clubs will then meet on Monday to discuss how they may move forward and somehow finish this season. And I am pleased to welcome our first two guests here, my buddies, mm -hmm. the two Robbies, Robbie Earl, Robbie Musto. Great to see you guys again. It'd be nice to do it in a little bit uh, closer quarters. But uh, Earl, I'll, I'll just start with you. Yeah. You know, we'll know we'll know more here in, okay. in a couple days and, and on Monday. But how optimistic yeah. are you that the Premier mm. League will figure out a way to get this season going again? I am optimistic. Uh, the Premier League are, are calling it Project Restart. That's the attempt to resume the 2019-20 season to a completion. Um, as you said, the, the Prime Minister in the UK is going to address the nation and talk about how he's going to relax the, the lockdown. And then probably sport's going to, going to fall in place. The 20 clubs are talking uh, on Monday. And I think we'll, we'll get a, a period where maybe there'll be a month or so of getting everybody ready. And then maybe mid-June ready to kick off the, the, the situation. Now, I know there's been talk about neutral stadiums. There's been talk about the amount of testing that, that's going to be required uh, by the clubs and, and for all the players. What was really interesting, Ahmed, in, in this whole situation, that Sergio Aguero, the star striker at Manchester City, he's come out and said that he knows a number of players are very scared about talking about a restart. And that he's a little bit worried about whether it's for other family members, children, people who will be more vulnerable about uh, um, uh, giving the, the virus to them. So there is some issues that the Premier League are going to have to deal with. But I do believe we will get a, a, a start of, of some sort so over the next few weeks. Yeah, I think the, uh, the encouraging thing as well is that yesterday the Bundesliga in Germany has basically okayed it, or Angela mm. Merkel okayed it, for their league to start up again. They're starting next weekend. Now, the boost that's going to give yeah. to the football community around the world is huge. The pressure that, it, I guess, in some ways, it adds to England and the Premier League will exist as well. They'll want to get going as well. But I think the fact that they have got the green light yesterday to go ahead for next weekend, that's got to be a good sign. Now, of course, Boris Johnson in the UK always safety is paramount and how the, the NHS, the National Health Service is dealing with the uh, epidemic in the UK is going to be important. It looks like with the numbers that the, the cases are coming down, the deaths are coming down. So, you know, that, that of course overrides everything. Even what's happening in different countries is if the National Health Service in the UK can, you know, can handle uh, maybe uh, things that might come on the back of this. Of course, it's safety is paramount. And that's why Boris Johnson on Sunday night is going to tell the nation how that's going. And then the UK, um, the Premier League club's owners will meet on Monday. We're hoping to kind of figure out a start date. Earl, you have something to add? Robert, just on that, Ahmed, sorry, just before we, we move on on that, just as a player, it's interesting, Sergio Aguero, you know, big name players come out and said that. I've got a friend at the PFA who said they've been having a lot of calls about players who are asking questions. Just wondered, you know, as ex-players putting ourselves back in that situation, would you be totally comfortable going in? Would you have no issues? You know, you might have somebody at home who, who was a bit more vulnerable who you're going back to. Would you still have no issues playing at this stage if somebody said a month's time we're kicking off? Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't. I mean, I, I think me and you are probably similar in that regard, Rob. I, I would just want to get back at it. You know, mm. you, you've got to put a certain amount of trust in your football club and, of course, the government, that, they, that they're okaying it. Yeah. We know there's going to be a bundle of tests. Maybe players are getting mm. tested twice a week. Um, of course, there's potential problems yeah. if players during the season, somebody goes down as a testing positive yeah, for this. I think the plan, plan is right now mm. that they're isolated, they're kept away from, from everybody else, of course, uh, but the, the, the season continues, the team continues to play. So I would want to get back at it. I, mm. I, I just, you know, I just do. And I, and I did also read, Rob, that there's counselling being available for all players. Mamo Lanzini, another midfield player at West Ham United, has expressed yeah. concerns about playing again as well. So it's important to note that the safety and all, all the players that, that will be involved, that will be marking it set pieces, that will be close together, that will be tackling together, they'll be sweating. You know, yeah. it, it is going to be unnerving for some players to be so close together because, as we know, football is such a mm. physical uh, sport where they're close together. There will be concerns, but I, I do believe that with the support from the PFA and the football clubs, that I think we'll be okay with that. Mm.
Yeah, that's why you see all the leagues mm. across the world treading so carefully because they want to do it mm. as safely as possible. Everyone yeah. wants to get back out there, but you want to figure out a way that you can do it as safely as possible. So, Earl, you know, it's one thing getting the players mm. back onto the pitch. It's another thing trying to figure out how this season will look. And there are some, some ideas floating out there, perhaps scrapping relegation yeah. for this year and keeping all the teams, uh, the 20 mm. teams that are in there now, in there mm. for next season, playing at neutral sites in, uh, yeah. away from city centers. What have you heard, and, and what are those ideas do you think yeah. could potentially work? I think the neutral sites thing is important. You, you've got a certain number of football clubs, I think, of, of, of uh, Liverpool and an Everton. They're amongst populated housing areas. I don't think that's going to be ideal. They're talking about eight to ten neutral stadiums where they're not close to housing, they're, they're away from city centres, etc., um, where the games could be played under safe, as, as Robbie Musso said, conditions. What we are seeing, though, um, Ahmed, which is interesting, a bit of pushback from the teams at the bottom of the league. They're almost suggesting that by playing at neutral grounds, they're losing their home advantage. You know, every team loves to play at home. Every team generally has better results at home. They're saying of the nine or ten games that, that they've got left down at the bottom of the table, five of them would be at home. We're going to lose that advantage, which probably means they have a greater chance of getting relegated. And we're seeing pushback from the teams at the bottom of the table who are saying they don't want to really go that way. They want to almost void the season and so the teams stay intact. I don't like that idea that you can void the, the, the relegation. So when Aston Villa are playing maybe, I don't know, Manchester United who are going for Champions League, you can't have Villa playing for nothing and Manchester United playing for something. Every game in the Premier League has got to matter. Uh, and I like the idea of the neutral grounds. I know it, it doesn't suit everybody. I know some feel, are going to feel a little unjust, but it, it's not a perfect storm and we've got to find a solution that, that's best for everybody. Robert, I don't think that's negotiable. I think the 8 to 10 neutral stadiums is something that the government is stipulating, Ahmed. So that, that's, you know, I, listen, I, I don't think the Bundesliga are using neutral venues. They're using their own stadiums. Uh, I think it's a little bit different no. the way that mm. their stadiums are set up in, in their country. So I, I would, of course, prefer every team to play in their stadiums, but the government stipulated, listen, we've got to do neutral yeah. venues. So that's OK. Now, back on the relegation part of it, it's not as though there's a home advantage anyway, Rob, is it? I mean, there's going to be no fans in the stadium. Let's be honest. The no, main advantage no, no of playing fans, at home, yeah. yeah, is the fans get behind the team and the extra mm. motivation, the extra drive, and well, uh, that's yeah. going to be gone. Neutral venues, you know, it's almost going to be like a neutral venue. So I, I, I mm. really, I really hope that yeah. that doesn't get in the way of, of completing the season. Neutral venues, it's the same for everybody mm. else in the league. You know, I think Brighton have got to go to Liverpool, Rob. That, you know. That, that would have been incredibly yeah. difficult. Uh, get, but So they'll lose <laughs> their advantage, Liverpool. So I think it swings and roundabouts. I really, mm. I, I can't stress how important that the promotion and relegation is. And it's going to trickle down the leagues. It's yeah. the way the English football works. And I think that's the way to go. To, to, to say that no teams, because that's what's been suggested by some of the lower leagues, uh, the, um, the, the teams struggling in the Premier League, mm. there's no relegation this year. It'll be a bigger Premier League of 22 teams. It gets messy and difficult. Um, I really hope that neutral venues, are, uh, the, 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 all the clubs will agree on that and the vote goes through that that's the way they're mm. going to do it and relegation will exist this season. Rob, yeah, just, just I, taking I, I, that I, point, Armour, just another point in terms yep. of, of, of the season, j just quickly in terms of there is an issue with players' contracts, Rob. Players' contracts are supposed to terminate, run out on June the 30th. Now, it's likely that the season is going to go beyond June the 30th. And FIFA have said that, you know, they'll allow players to, to extend those contracts through to the end of what is a domestic season. But I'm also hearing, and I know the PFA have got involved in that, some players are, are, are suggesting, and they've been given legal advice, that... FIFA haven't, haven't got the authority to say that. The, the FA haven't got authority to push that through. Even the clubs have no right to say to players, you have to extend your contract. And I'm just thinking of some of the players like a Pedro, a, a Willian at Chelsea, a Giroud, a, a Jan Vertonghen at Spurs. What if they were to play in one of those extended games, pick up an ACL injury and then not be able to, to move on after the end of the season. I just wonder if that's something that, that still needs to be thought out properly for, for players whose contracts are going to run out on June the 30th. Yeah, yes. I mean, it's yeah. a really important part of it. I, I would think that this is going to be a case-by-case, -case, an individual basis here. If, if it suits the player mm. to play on through the end of June 30th into July, I mean, if it all goes kind of to plan, they'll be playing right through July. If it suits the player, it suits the club, 
yeah. then I think the player will agree to do it. I think you can't stop a player if he wants to leave at June 30th and go and sign for another, mm. another team. You know, that, yeah. that's where it's going to get difficult. If, if Willian wants to leave uh, Chelsea on June 30th and go and sign Just, for, yeah. for Chelsea yeah. on July 1st, you know, what happens then? I, I think it's really difficult. It's murky. I think it's going to happen if, you know, fingers crossed that the Premier League does start in the middle of June. We mm. are going to be in such a situation. I just think it will be a, an individual basis. I mean, some players will leave and go to clubs in, in different leagues around Europe. So yeah. a very interesting part. Uh, I, don't, I think you're right, Rob. I think legally, I'm not sure FIFA can, can, can weigh in on this or, um, mm. or stop certain things happening if a player signed a contract that finishes on June the 30th. They'll have the power. There are so many things that are that are uncertain, but one thing that was not uncertain the last time mm -hmm. we were doing shows together, guys, was that Liverpool was going to win uh, the title this year, first time a Premier League title for them. <laughs> yeah. Ro Robbie mm -hmm. Earl, how, how does all of this change, how we'll look back at, uh, at Liverpool and what was turning out to be a historic season for them? It, it's going to be a, a Premier League title. Their first Premier League title has taken 30 years. But it's always going to have an asterisk with it, um, Ahmed. And the asterisk is that we had COVID, that we had the, 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 the break in the season, that they resumed. Yes, they got the points. But it, it certainly doesn't taint it for me because I, I think of the football that they played in, in the what, 29 games we've had so far were outstanding. But it will always have the asterisk and it will always be the, the COVID title. Um, but they still deserve it and, and have been magnificent and still could, could break records if they win enough games. Yeah, but so, Rob, I, I, don't, I don't understand why there's got to be an asterisk. Why has there got to be an asterisk? They've so clearly been the best side. Yeah, there's been a big break, but it because shouldn't people... take anything away. I mean, it's just, it's, of course, it's the really unusual. The neutral stadiums, but... Rob. The neutral, mm. yeah, the neutral I, I, stadiums but... is, is different. It's been a different 38-game season than we've had in the past. But, but, no, but no question that they deserve to be champions. Uh, mm. And again, when oh, they get back, they'll, absolutely. whatever state in their plan, they're going to win it. I just, I, I don't think there should be an mm. asterisk because they have been mm. absolutely incredibly good this season and um, will deserve the title, of course. Yeah, just one loss they picked up uh, towards the end of the season. Guys, that was great. That was like we were back mm. in, in studio in Stamford, Connecticut. I tee you up and you guys just go. Missing was, you, my friend. Like we're, we're missing you. <laughs> <laughs> Miss you guys as well. Great information. We'll know more. Uh, coming up after the weekend about the, the fate of the season this year for the Premier League, Robbie Musto and Robbie Earl. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.